take a look at the AT4053B boom mic, specifically in this case for indoor dialogue. All right, welcome back. Today I, uh, I just got in this microphone, a little uh, Christmas present to myself, but really I've been looking for a boom microphone to use indoors, mainly for um, interviews, for stuff that I do. And if you research this stuff, a lot of people use a shotgun microphone, but because of the long tube that they have on it, the rejection tube, and you can hear we're in an echoey type room, that can cause an issue. So this is a hypercardioid condenser microphone. It's the AT4053B. And uh, I'm testing it out. That's all this is. I wanted to put it on a boom, hear the audio. Now, what I waited for was the fridge to go off. I'm setting up kind of a perfect environment. And what I'm working on right now is uh, levels. So when I'm talking, I'm getting about minus 12. And when I don't talk, this is kind of how you want to set up your recorder, uh, I don't want to see any levels on my meters if possible. So let me not talk. So I can hear a little bit of a ground floor even though I'm not getting uh, levels on the meter. So let me turn it down a little bit because recording at about minus 12 is probably, it's ideal, but I don't probably don't need it that, that hot. So right about there, I'm not hearing any ground floor, not much of a ground floor, but my peaks when I'm talking uh, have significantly gone down. So I'll probably bring it up a little bit more. So the the switches uh, or the knobs at about two o'clock, the, uh, the overall gain is at, uh, it's on medium gain or mid gain on the Tascam DR60D. And I'm getting about minus 17 uh, when I'm talking. Now, the, the thing that's different here that wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be, wouldn't exist in an interview type situation is that you're looking at the microphone about, it's more than two feet away from me. In fact, let's see. So. This is uh, pretty geeky, but from my mouth, yeah, we're talking over two feet, two feet, two inches, okay? So that is not how far I'm going to be uh, in an interview situation. You can see all the headroom that I have here is a lot more than I would have, uh, the shot would be a lot tighter and this microphone would be closer because the key is always getting the microphone close. And especially in a room like this, where it's just flat walls, you can hear the reverb. Now, what these microphones, why this microphone is better for uh, indoor dialogue, I talked about the rejection tube. Uh, when you get those reflections, uh, it's canceling out that sort of that frequency of the voice, but it can do weird things in a shotgun. This one doesn't have that long uh, rejection tube. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have those, um, I guess, phase issues. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. So it doesn't have some of the issues that a shotgun mic can create. Now, a lot of people use a shotgun mic indoors uh, successfully, and I've done it here uh, and in other videos, no problem. But this just eliminates one more um, potential issue from the situation, which is, you know, you've got this recorder and a camera and a microphone, lights, you've got a lot going on. It's good to eliminate issues. And this is just, this is the appropriate mic for the situation. So I will move this microphone in closer and we'll get a sound of what that's like. But I just wanted to see, well, I wanted to test out the noise level of this microphone. Is it is it clean? Is it quiet? Now I am only running at mid, like I said, mid gain and my, uh, you know, my input level is not turned all the way up. So that's good. I am gonna have to bring this up in post, probably a pretty decent amount, but you know, I won't know completely, even though I'm monitoring audio right now via headphones, I won't know completely what I'm getting until I listen to it in post-production. And as well, I'll do some processing of that sound. So the sound you're hearing now has been processed with not just getting the levels where I want them, but I've done a little bit of noise reduction. There may be a, uh, a noise gate or an expander going on. So when I don't talk, it's completely quiet. And let's see, a little maybe a little EQ. We can knock out a little bit of the low end. And I have a shot with the fridge in it, and this is what it sounds like when the fridge is going. And so, you know, right now it sounds pretty good. I'm gonna move the microphone in closer, 
and set up a shot that is more like what I would shoot for these videos where you would not see the microphone. I wanted you to be able to see the microphone. The microphone is as far, it's actually further than I'd want to get from my mouth for any one shoot. So, you know, if you had to, you could do this, but it's not ideal. It's almost like the microphone being on the camera. Now the camera is, it is far away. It's so far, I can't be sure I'm in focus, but I have a way of dealing with that with my remote and the way I set up the camera. I've got another video for that. And um, it's so far away that now you're hearing the audio on the camera, that's what that sounds like. And that's why you don't just use a microphone on the camera, especially when the camera is you know, a good 10 feet, uh, maybe eight feet away from you. Uh, it's not going to sound good at all. It sounds terrible. So you get that microphone closer. So let's move the microphone in and see what that sounds like. All right, so we're back here and the, um, the microphone is in a much more uh, audio friendly position. It is just out of shot. So it's literally right here. There you go, okay? So the microphone is not in the shot, but it is just close enough to get much better audio. So I'm getting uh, on the meter, I'm about minus, uh, at the peaks, probably about minus 18, minus 17. And so this is a good level. And on top of that, I've been able to turn things down. So before, not a whole lot, before I was at about a, uh, about two o'clock, maybe almost three o'clock on, on the input knob, uh, on the fader, but now I'm pretty much at 12 o'clock. But you can hear that the microphone is, it's much more full and rich uh, because it's closer to the sound of the audio. And this has, you know, a lot of rejection in terms of if I just point it down like that. So just pointing it down, not at my mouth, you hear it's a much big, uh, much bigger difference. So as I bring it back around here to my mouth, we sort of find that sweet spot. And in fact, it's pretty surprising that pointing it at my forehead actually still sounds okay. But, and that's the polar pattern. It's a cardioid pattern, right? So it goes out like a, like a heart shape. So I'm going to bring it back here, try to find that sweet spot by listening, dialing in, you know, and it sounds... Sounds pretty good. It's going to sound pretty good when you put it right around uh, the mouth, between the mouth and the chest, somewhere pointing in, in that area because your, you know, your voice is kind of, my voice is kind of shooting towards the camera and uh, right through the pattern of the mic. Okay, so this sounds pretty good. And if I'm quiet, you know, I can hear a little noise floor, but I mean, that's a lot of that right now is just probably life. <laughs> and I still hear reverb. Again, this microphone is not going to necessarily knock down the reverb. I don't hear a lot of difference between a shotgun microphone and this uh, AT4053B. I don't hear a lot of difference necessarily in the reverb, but it will knock down that uh, those potential weird sounding issues that you might get from a shotgun microphone. So this is what the microphone sounds like. Gonna have some more fun testing this mic. Thanks for following along. I will see you next time.